What's up guys, this is Coach Gaglion here from Gaglion Strength and GaglionStrength.com. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. And if you've been watching uh, for the last couple episodes, we are switch, switching, 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 <laughs> switching gears a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to kind of, um, we're still gonna have guests and we're still gonna uh, interview some people involved in powerlifting and some uh, members of the team. Uh, that have had great success with us, but I wanted to uh, give you guys an inside look on kind of what's going on between my ears here, uh, what's going on in my noggin and our philosophy and just what we're about at Gaglion Strength and what, what kind of separates us, what makes us different. Uh, and also just to give a little context, because I think that's important, I think that gets lost, especially in social media. Um, we see these snapshots, we see these highlight reels of people, uh, and we don't really know like the why behind what they're doing or why they're sharing things. Um, we don't always get the big picture, so this audio format, which is a little bit longer, we can dive in a little bit more depth and have some more, uh, you know, I would say more meaningful conversation versus just a highlight of someone's PR or like a little snapshot, because I think things can get um, taken out of context a lot. So I hope this kind of clears things up and also just helps add to like why we do what we do and kind of what, um, you know, a little bit about our community and our mission or our culture and things like that. And if you're a coach out there, hopefully that can allow you to kind of create your own kind of culture, community, and your own like kind of values and guidelines. Uh, and if you're a lifter, obviously just provides a little context. And, uh, you know, I've been, for those that don't know, I've been, and I've said this several times, but if it's your first time listening, you know, I've been in the powerlifting world for over a dozen years, going on my, it's going into my 13th year of lifting. I started at 18 years old, now 31, going on 32 for next year. Uh, so, and I, I plan on doing this for a long time. So a lot of what we do is going to really uh, be involved with longevity and just being involved in the sport and just becoming stronger and really focusing on the journey and the process uh, and not being so too concerned with, you know, the end result uh, too soon and getting, you know, having more patience. But anyway, so today's podcast uh, and our talk today is, was actually inspired, I want to always give credit where credit is due, uh, by Matt Reynolds. Uh, he is uh, uh, of Barbell Logic and started training online coaching, so I wanted to kind of give them uh, and give him a shout out. Uh, he was actually, uh, I don't remember, maybe it was like two years ago or so when I was trying to get my, maybe maybe even longer. Uh, but Matt was uh, hap, uh, was nice enough to help me a little bit on, give me some advice on kind of starting my online stuff because uh, he's done really well with the online coaching. And since then, the starting to the online coaching has really uh, exploded and, and it, seems like, it seems like he's doing really well. I haven't really talked to him since, but he did an episode on his podcast on Barbell Logic about his values of his company. I thought this was a great idea. Uh, and it's also kind of made me think about, you know, maybe I should revamp or revisit uh, our own values. And at least nothing else got my wheels turned. And I'm like, this would be a great uh, episode to talk about what we're about. And we have our company values and kind of our community values. And they're all kind of wrapped into like a little package. And we put those on our wall. We have some different slogans and mottos and things we're gonna go through today. Um, I think as a business owner, as a, coach just as a person uh, it's kind of important to think about this stuff um, so some of the values that are on the wall are very much um, also uh, coincide with my values as, as a person as a human and does that mean that um, I am a hundred percent perfect all the time no I am human I'm fallible and I make mistakes and I've made many mistakes and I will continue to make mistakes uh, but part of that is growing and you grow when you make mistakes and you learn from them right but these values help kind of keep you in check. And I, I've always noticed and what I've learned and, you know, again, shout out to my business coach, Paul Reddick and his group um, and people like some mentors like Zach Evanesh, you know, I've really learned that when you when your values are clear and you understand and you kind of live by them, uh, your stress level and your anxiety definitely is a lot lower. Uh, and you just feel you're able to kind of go to, to bed easier at night, no matter, even if things are really bad in your life. So I always try to stay true to these values and I always try to stay true. Uh, when I'm making decisions, I always think like, is this the right thing to do? And when we say right thing, it's like, is it the right thing for the company? Is it the right thing for the team? And that's something we're gonna kind of dive in a little bit deeper. So that's just a little context of why I'm doing this. And I wanna kind of dive right in. So I invite you, if you are a coach, if you are a business owner, uh, or if you just you know wanna just become a better person, uh, this might be something useful to kind of just think about. Think about it, and I think that um, if, if your values are truly important, you should be able to kind of do them. Uh, you should be able to kind of recite them, you know, like memorize them essentially. And uh, they should be kind of unique to you and your and what your culture is and what you're about as a person. So 
Um, some things obviously might overlap, but I'll just kind of, so all these kind of values kind of coincide from a business sense, from a training sense and a life sense. I'll, I'll try to kind of hit on these um, and be as thorough as possible without kind of putting a guest to sleep because uh, these mean a lot to me. So anyway, so the first thing is our, um, and some of these words maybe kind of can be interchangeable, but we have like a slogan and we have a motto, uh, but one of our, our, we'll start with the top. You can kind of see hopefully in frame, uh, but we'll, we'll put a picture if you can't see it for whatever reason. Uh, we have all these power words on the wall. And some of these words, like I said, are our slogan, our motto, um, what we're about, and also our values. So I want to start off with the slogan first, and the slogan is all in. And we actually have these G-Team bracelets uh, that say all in on them. And it says Team Yagman and Strength on I wear this every single day. And uh, I'll, let me rewind a little bit about the bracelet, and then I'll talk about where this kind of came from. So before I started my business, um, there was a co one of the coaches I looked up to was uh, Coach Alan Cosgrove out of Results Fitness in California. I won't. I don't. I don't remember the town, but he's out of California. I've met him a couple of times in person. Uh, fabulous person. And what I what I really um, loved about Alan Alan Cosgrove uh, was his story about overcoming cancer um, and his attitude about it. And that, it's a little bit like outside the scope of this podcast, but you should definitely check him out uh, if you're in the fitness industry and stuff. A lot of really cool stuff. Great business model. Great person. But I really loved. I, I, I'm pretty sure this was. Uh, again, don't quote me on this, but he was looking for spaces for his business, like while he was undergoing chemo and all this stuff. And that's how like mentally strong this guy was. Uh, and he was, I believe, it was a stage four cancer, so he didn't really have a, lot, a good shot to live. But he always seized at the moment. And he always went all in, and he always pushed to be the best he could be. Uh, he's got a great attitude. He's really funny, great sense of humor, works really hard. Um, just a great guy in general. I've always had good interactions with him when I've met him in person. Um, and that really inspired me. And he had this, um, this these Livestrong bracelets, and I thought that was, that was such a great thing. And the whole point of the Livestrong bracelet, obviously, you know, I don't know if he thought about this, but... It's, it's, always, it's always on your wrist and it's a constant reminder that you can kind of overcome and you can push through and you can deal with adversity. And uh, my buddy Zach Evanesh, uh, and I believe he still does this. I don't think it's always, he's always, uh, if he still is attached to the same charity, but uh, for the Live Strong and the Live Strong, he did these fundraisers. Uh, I know Alan did some fundraisers as well and it was for the, the charity, it was for leukemia and lymphoma and all this stuff. And, Anyway, it was just a great cause, and I just thought with the, the whole bracelet idea, I really liked because it was something very small, but it could be very meaningful. It's an anchor, um, and I have a lot of tattoos and stuff that are anchors and have a lot of meaning as well. I have little trinkets in my house and my apartment uh, that remind me of really important things. So I wanted to kind of, I think that those things can be powerful, like a picture, uh, you know, tattoo, a bracelet, just something, you know something you put on your refrigerator, it's things that you see all the time, I think it'd really be helpful to kind of ground you and uh, just to kind of allow you to be in a good frame of mind. And kind of bring you back down to earth uh, when things are tough and when things are not going your way. So that's what kind of inspired the whole bracelet thing. So we wear this, uh, I wear, and a lot of our teammates, you could see will we'll wear the bracelet, not every single one, uh, but these all-in bracelets. And the kind of all-in thing, and I believe, uh, I believe this kind of phrase really kind of jumped out at me, I believe. It was uh, around the time, I think, when the Giants like won the Super Bowl, and I think there might have been like some sort of documentary. Again, don't quote me on this, but I'd have to kind of research. This is kind of all from memory. I didn't really, you know, a lot of these podcasts we kind of just do uh, from the heart. Uh, it's like to be more organic and not be like too overly prepared, have a little bit of an outline, but just kind of speak from the heart. Uh, and just, you know, I think that's just a good way to, that's how I try to be with a lot of my presentations. And depending on the presentation, I might prepare a little bit more, but anyway. Uh, getting, off, getting off on a tangent, but this all-in concept, I know, like, uh, the whole point of, I, I believe, with the, like, the New York Giants, they kind of just decided that they were going to, like, fully 100% commit, uh, and that's when they had that great season, and, you know, uh, they won the Super Bowl and just had a fantastic year. And, you know, my feeling is, with that kind of mentality, is that if you're going to do something, uh, why not give it an honest try, and why not give 100%? Regardless if the goal is lofty or not, regardless of if it's an easy or a hard task, uh, or you know, one of the another person I would look up to a lot is Andy Frisella, and he talks about this all the time. If you're like a McDonald's worker, if you're a trash man or whatever, like why not be the best at your job? 
you know, does it, what's the cost of that? Like, wouldn't, like, no one wants to be like, oh, you know, I want to be like, okay at this. Like, no one, <laughs> that's not really like a really glorious thing to do, right? And everyone has different goals and stuff, but I, I just think that's a, a good mindset. I think the, 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 the work and the, just that you're striving for greatness and you're striving for growth and to be better, I think that's a really important aspect of life is that you're always trying to improve. And the only way you're really going to improve is that you, if you fully commit to something, um, a lot of people don't foresee their full potential because they don't fully commit. And obviously there's going to be times where, you know, life gets out of balance and you might, your priorities might shift. But if you're going for a big task, if you're doing a competition, if you're trying something new, if you're entering a new career, why not commit 100%? Uh, so one of the things, and I don't know, maybe we'll get a picture of this, whatever. Uh, I felt so strongly about this all-in thing that we had a bracelet. I also got all-in uh, tattooed on my arm, and it has uh, the worst hand in poker. Uh, just to kind of be a metaphor that no matter like what hand you're dealt in life, it's not the hand you're dealt, it's how you play your cards. So obviously we can't control our genetics, we can't control our parents, we can't, we can't always control our environment, but we can control our effort and we can control our attitude. You should always focus on effort and attitude. And if we put in 100% effort and we have a positive and uh, hardworking attitude, that's gonna give us the best result, period. Uh, you know, don't dip your toe in the water, they say you just jump right in, right? And that's gonna be the best way to, when you're starting something new, when you have a lofty goal. So that's where like kind of the all in comes into play and we really feel like that's a really, that's the reason it's at the top is we really believe that the first step is committing yourself to, to the goal. You need to commit yourself to the goal in order, if you, in order for you to be successful. Um, when I entered this, biz, this business, you know, over seven years ago, you know, I didn't foresee like what it would become, but I didn't like want to like be like okay as a coach. <laughs> I didn't like strive to be like an okay coach. I didn't strive to uh, be a mediocre power lifter. Like I, you know, I pushed, you know, for a 900 pound squat. I pushed to help some of athletes break world records and become nationally ranked. We push for people, you know, and yes, we work with people of all levels, but the goal was always to get better. Uh, the goal always to, to do things to the, to the best of our ability. And, and you know, obviously things and, and our philosophy and our team aspect has changed a lot over the years, but that was kind of our starting point, was to be 100% committed to the cause. Uh, the second thing is our motto. Uh, and this is like, I guess we started kind of using this motto uh, back in 2011, and uh, is to educate, motivate, and dominate. And I think this says a lot about our company and just what we're about, but essentially there's three tiers to it, and this could be in life, in business, in training. They could all like kind of work hand in hand, and, and all these words can. But we, we believe, number one, everything starts with a good foundation of education. And whereas I am not, admittedly, I am not the most technical coach, I am not the best programmer in the world, uh, but, uh, and you know, part of that being, uh, you know, I have a master's in education, this was not my kind of plan uh, A, originally, originally I, I have a master's in education, I have a personal training certification through AAPTE, uh, and for anyone that's on, in the Long Island area, you should check out AAPTE.org, they're a great company and they're great people, uh, for learning the, the fundamentals of personal training if you're in the Long Island area. And they have like face-to-face, -face, like actual, like, li like you could learn from real people, not just from a textbook, which I love. Uh, and I'm constantly learning from those guys and uh, even on a standpoint from like biomechanics and physics and things like that. Uh, Cause a lot of the stuff I learned was self-taught. I didn't, I don't have a degree in exercise science. So uh, a lot of the stuff I had to learn on my own uh, and it's, uh, you know, it just was a little bit more challenging in my opinion, but I had a big enough reason why, so I, I figured it out and I start, started learning. But the education piece is very important. I think that everything we do here, it is built on, it's, it's built on anecdotes and it's built on experience, of course. I think you need that real world experience and that real world knowledge, but everything also we do, it, there is some scientific reason behind it. There is some sound you know, information about studies and things like that and, and, and books I've read over the years. Uh, we have like a whole library at our gym um, of books from you know the past 12 years plus of learning uh, and you know all the stuff but education is a really and I think the constant learn learning 
Uh, the constant learning, the constant education is really important. You're always growing. You have that, we, that kind of white belt mentality. If you have that white belt mentality, you always want to get better. Uh, even at the time of this taping, I just signed up for a precision nutrition certification because uh, nutrition for me has always been a hole in my game and I want to learn more about it. So I'm, t I'm, in I'm you know, taking a white belt, 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 white belt mentality. I'm a little hungry. I think I'm thinking about uh, some sort of melt, but some sort of melted cheese or something. But so white belt mentality, not white melt. White belt mentality, and uh, I'm going to be learning a little bit more about nutrition, and especially as I've had a lot of health goals and fat loss goals. It's going to go hand in hand with what I'm trying to work on right now, and I want to I up my game and be a better coach and allow to give my clients and my teammates better advice. Our team, I should say, our team, uh, our team, better advice uh, with diet and nutrition. So that's the education piece. And so this is the thing, and I remembered, uh, this was something Mark Bell told me a long time ago, and he, he continues to say, uh, inspire, not instruct, inspire, not instruct. And it really hit home with me because I did notice over the years, and I still notice that the people with the most followers and potentially the people that are making the most money and having the most successful businesses are not always the researchers. They're not always the most technical, smarter coaches. And you need to have that motivation aspect. You need to be able to inspire people to, to be better. And it should be something, uh, if people are gonna be consistent in the long run, uh, they need to be inspired to be better. They need to be inspired. They, they need to want to come to the gym. It needs to be fun. It needs to be motivating. It needs to be, they need to have that motivation. Because if they don't have the will to get better, they don't have the will to be consistent, it's kind of a moot point. If you get the best program in the world, it's not executed and your, your team and your members are not compliant and they're not executing, it doesn't matter if you get the best education in the world. So it starts with that foundation of education and I believe that you should be constantly getting better, but if you can't actually apply it and implement that knowledge, so the motivation piece is big. And if you can tie those two things together, that's when you can dominate, that's when you can win. You need to have the knowledge, you need to have the application of the knowledge and that allows you to be that allows you to have success. So the knowledge plus the application is going to equal success. So that's what educate, do, educate, motivate, dominate is all about. And we want you know we want to win. We want to win. We want to, We're here to get better. And sometimes that winning and that battle might be with yourself, and that might that battle and that winning might be against an opponent. Uh, but sometimes the first person you got to conquer is yourself first and foremost, and then we can worry about being more competitive. Uh, like I said, in sports and things like that. So I started out training mostly athletes, so especially that competition aspect has always been kind of a part of our gym. But again, those those things have shifted a little bit as I've worked, starting to work with more recreational lifters and kind of everyday people to help them get stronger. So that's kind of our uh, philosophy on that. So that's kind of our, our, uh, our slogan and our motto. Uh, so now I wanna, we have kind of five uh, five main values. And then I'll kind of get into the last piece, which is kind of the team aspect. But so I wanted to think about something uh, with the values that I can remember and that was really important to me, uh, important to our programming, important to our, our philosophy, uh, and that really made sense. So whenever I'm writing a program or creating a, a template or uh, deliver, delivering information for you, everyone that's watching. I, I try to think about these things. So the first piece, and it's one of the most important things, is uh, purpose. And one of our, you know, a great colleague of mine, uh, Greg Robbins, and Tony uh, out of the Strength House, they, their their kind of I think slogan or motto is "Train with a purpose," and I love that. So one of our values is purpose. Um, if you're a coach and you program a certain exercise for somebody. Uh, or if there's a certain amount of frequency or volume or whatever the case may be, uh, you should be able to kind of explain why. You should have a purpose for doing that exercise. Um, the classic kind of example that might frustrate a lot of strength coaches is the, the guy that is maybe foam rolling every inch of their body for 45 minutes and they're trying to like throw grenades approach and they don't really know like what they're doing, they're not being a sniper. So instead of throwing grenades, we always recommend try to be a sniper and be more targeted. Uh, if you're going to do something, there should be a purpose for it. And, you know, sure, there might be some time, you know, if you're a more uh, adept coach or uh, an advanced trainee, there might be some time where you're kind of throwing grenades and you're hunting and you're trying to figure out the problem and troubleshooting a little bit. But in general, to be the most efficient, you want to always want to have a purpose for everything you're doing. And obviously you might need to refer out 
uh, especially when it comes to injuries and things like that. Um, but you should have a purpose for everything you do. You should have a purpose for what you're posting on social media. You should have a purpose for um, you know, throwing these certain events that you do or programming certain exercises. Or So I'm very careful about picking um, just when I'm choosing, like making a decision, I just want to like, I always ask myself, like, what's the purpose of this? Uh, what do I want, like, what do I want to have happen because of this? And I think that can be very helpful, especially when you're allocating things like time, or time's like one thing that we can't get back, right? So when you're allocating time, like you're figuring out like what's the purpose of this task or what's the purpose of this uh, project, I think that really helps a lot. So purposes are our number one thing. Uh, and then after that, and this is a big one for me, because uh, over the years, um, you know, like anyone else, I've had issues with, we've all had issues with certain people. I've had issues, you know, uh, relationships gone wrong and things like that. And I, and I definitely am at fault. I could have handled things a lot better. Uh, respect is a big one. And they always say like kind of respect is earned, right? Uh, but I do think that if you give out respect, uh, I think you will get respect back. Um, and one thing that I try to do, and if you, even you kind of, I kind of caught myself before, um, I try to lead from the front versus like, there's like a meme, it's like, you could be a boss or a leader. I try to lead from the front versus like just kind of barking orders from the back. Uh, so I try to treat people like equal. I try not to talk down to people. It's not to say that sometimes I slip up, uh, but giving out respect is huge for me. Um, someone who squats 900 pounds should be able, be able to emotionally celebrate somebody who's squatting 135 for the first time or squatting the barbell for the first time. Uh, just because you're strong doesn't give you the right to be a jerk. So uh, having respect for others, respect for your teammates, uh, respect for other colleagues is important. Uh, I try my very hardest not to bash or mudsling any kind of methods that I don't personally agree with. And again, going back to Andy Priscilla, he just had a great uh, kind of Sunday sermon uh, podcast on the MFCEO podcast about like kind of uh, if you disagree with somebody, you can still disagree with somebody and still be cordial and still even be friends with them and you know have a really intelligent debate or conversation and not. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen, especially on the internet. It's more of a, people can be very uh, polarizing and all, very uh, kind of religious about certain ideas and ideology and methods and uh, instead of actually trying to see like the other point of view. So just having respect for people is really big and it is cliche, but I think it's always important to try to put yourself in someone else's shoes. It's kind of a weird saying, but the other kind of quote is like, you should never judge somebody until you've walked a million miles in their moccasins. Uh, and this goes back to having context for people. So, you know, it's important that um, I think uh, critical debate and things like that and challenging ideas, I think is fine, but you want to always do it in a, in a respectful way. Uh, so having respect, so for me in our, in our channel, what we do, I always try to uh, view things from like a positive perspective. And, and if you look at some of my earlier videos, I probably cursed a little bit more, I probably was a little bit more fired up because um, I was coming from a different place and I probably wanted to assert my, you know, myself into the industry a little bit more. But now I'm very comfortable with my skill set and, and, and the accomplishments that myself and my team has achieved and everyone under me. So I don't really need to do that. I don't really feel I need to prove anything anymore. Uh, so I'm always trying to be respectful of others in the industry, respectful of other athletes, uh, not talking down to people. So I think that kind of, I don't need to, I don't think harp on this point, but uh, I just think people, I think that we need to have more respect for one another, and especially on the internet. Um, it could be so easy to attack somebody or criticize someone from behind a screen uh, and I would rather to see more people have like these more respectful conversations in person and you know because uh, sometimes we kind of lose sight of uh, there's a person on the other side of the screen and that person has a family and they have kids they may have kids and they may have other people that are counting on them uh, so I think that's really important that we kind of show respect from what for one another um, that's a big one for me and that's something that um for, for especially, and going, that'll be the, the final point we're talking about the team, but all this kind of ties into our team, ask, team environment, our team philosophy. Uh, no one person is bigger than the entire group and everything needs to be about the team and not about any one individual. So the respect piece is big, I can't harp on that enough. 